Hi Langley, I'm Miss McKay and I just wanted to check in on you and say I hope you all are enjoying this time off from school, but also keeping up with your work and reading a lot. And I want to talk to you a little, about, a little bit about reading and a little bit about making inferences while we read. But first, did you know, did you realize how many times we make inferences in real life? For example, if you look behind me, you'll see I have bunk beds. They're not mine. I don't sleep on them. However, if you know that I have children, you could infer that maybe I'm in their bedroom to talk about inferencing, and you would be correct. I wanted to borrow some of their toys to kind of prove my point. For example, if you see this friend in a friend's book bag or in a friend's room, do you know who this is? Yes, this is Marshall from Paw Patrol. You could infer that this that a friend who has this friend, like my kids, loves Paw Patrol. Another thing you can infer, if you see this friend, do we know who this is? Yes, this is Catboy. If we see Catboy in somebody's backpack or in somebody's room, we may infer that, like my children, our friend likes PJ Masks. Let's do another inference, okay? This one may be a little bit tricky. We'll see. This is an actual picture that came off of my hallway wall, and I'll put it back a little bit later. But take a look. There's three people in this picture. What inference might you make looking at this picture? Now, if you said that your inference is that I have three children, thank you for making an inference. I'm proud of you there, but I don't have three children. This one's mine. This one's mine. So that's Taylor and that's Brayden. But the one in the middle, the tall one, that's actually my niece. So I don't have three children, but there are three children who are very special to my heart, and I do have their picture up on my wall. So sometimes our inferences can be wrong but it still gets us thinking. And we wanna keep that in mind. What's another way that we make inferences in our daily life? For example, if you're at the grocery store and you turn around and in the basket behind you, you see a giant bag of dog food, could you infer that the people behind you have a dog? Probably, and you might be right. So anytime we make a guess, an inference or an assumption, we are using that tool for reading in our daily life. Let's see what we can infer as we read one of my favorite stories, Giraffes Can't Dance. First, before I read, do you think, what can we infer? Who do you think or who do you infer is our main character? A giraffe, right. And his name is Gerald, and we'll see what happens to Gerald in our story. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. What can we infer if someone tries to run around but they buckle at the knees? Could we infer that maybe they're a little clumsy, not very coordinated? Probably. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. What could you infer about Gerald's self-confidence? Do you think he has a lot of self-confidence or not? Hmm. The warthog started waltzing, the rhinos rocked and rolled, the lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel, and eight baboons teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Can we infer that most of the jungle animals have been practicing a lot? Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. 
Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Can we infer that maybe Gerald doesn't have a lot of friends? Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles in the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. What can you infer about Gerald now? He threw his legs out sideways. He swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Can we infer that Gerald's a better dancer than he thought now that he actually tried? Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I am dancing. Yes, I am dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived, while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. Can we infer that the other animals realized they were wrong for picking on him? How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find the music that we love. The end. So think about all of the different things that you were able to infer. Were your inferences right? Were they wrong? Were they just a little bit off? It doesn't matter. Even if your inferences are wrong, you're still getting involved in what you're reading. And the more you get involved with what you're reading, the better off you'll be because the more you'll get out of it and the more you'll understand. And the more you understand and comprehend, the better re reader you will be. So continue to read. Keep reading, especially while we're stuck at home. It is supposed to rain the next few days. So please stay dry, stay healthy, and keep reading. Thanks.